Good afternoon. Welcome to Coronavirus and Our Mental Health. Today is May 25th, and I'm Ken Burtness coming to you from Haleiwa up on the North Shore. Now, a week ago Sunday, the New York Times made it official. They put on their cover, which for the first time ever extended to their back cover, a double page, showing one million dots signifying one million Americans who have died from the coronavirus. Uh, and yet people are demasking. They're throwing their mask in the trash. They're out in big groups. Uh, it still feels to most people like we're back to normal or we're closely getting to that. And yet there are still surges back and forth. And if you look at the Hawaii statistics, New York Times tells us as of yesterday, May 24th, the daily average number of new coronavirus cases in the past week is 1,000. 1,000 new cases every day this last week in Hawaii. Now, that's nothing to sneeze at, you know, and better have your mask on if you're doing the sneezing, I'll tell you. But luckily today, I have my good friend, Daniel Lev, with me. Daniel was with me in March. You may have seen that show. Daniel is a man of many hats, and in March he had on his psychologist hat, and we talked about therapy. Well, today, Daniel has his spiritual hat on. Daniel is a rabbi, and when he was a young man, he was a Taoist, so he is rich in spiritual tradition. And we're going to talk about how spirituality can help us in these dark times with coronavirus. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not only dealing with coronavirus, but we're dealing with so many other dark clouds in the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got the war in Ukraine. We've got mass shootings. We've got climate change. We've got inflation. We, it just boggles the mind. I can't even keep track of how many dark clouds there are in the sky. And yet spirituality can be a great support for us. It can help us see the clearer parts of the sky. It can help us see the way to a better day. Uh, so I would surely appreciate it if you could start us off and tell us a little bit how spirituality does that. Well, just to kind of put it in a little bit of context, spirituality is uh, a term that's been used since the 70s uh, heavily to indicate some kind of uh, spiritual life, whether it is in a formal religious form, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you know, Shintoism, whatever, or uh, more newer forms uh, that may draw from inspiration. As one of my clients said, I, 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 I don't go to church, but I believe in God. And that was her, she had her own way of, of doing it. So spirituality is is very potent uh, way to help someone uh, be in the world. Uh, but again, I'm aware some people watching these shows are not necessarily identifying themselves as religious or spiritual. So essentially I'm gonna be describing what a, a person who's religious or spiritual, what their experience from my experience of them is. I've worked with a lot of different folks from a lot of different orientations. So um, just right off, uh, um, one aspect of spirituality, again, looking at what the, the different traditions may have in common, their differences, but one thing in common is this sense that there is either a being or a force of some kind. Some people say, uh, the, I want to find out what the universe wants from me, or others will say, I want to know what God wants from me, or, or Krishna, or whoever. There's a sense of, 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 of a force, and, and in many of these traditions, some kind of relationship. Even in certain Buddhist traditions, you don't have a relationship necessarily with God, but a sense of your own Buddha nature or, or the being in the world. So it's this relationship that can really help folks through these dark and difficult times. Well, that's a big, that's a big item support because during these times, a lot of our support has been cut off. We've been cut off from people. We've been cut off from our daily activities, our groups and everything. 
And what I hear you saying, and what I certainly believe is, if we can look inside to that spirituality, whatever our own spirituality is, it can be a support during these times. One of these things, one of the things that you and I talked about before this show was, we have a tendency to take life for granted. Um, we have expectations of life. And when things go wrong, those expectations are sort of lost. <laughs> and we think, my God, where am I? You know, this is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not where I was headed to. And all of a sudden, I'm in this different place with different rules and I'm lost. Mm -hmm. And I think spirituality can find that for us. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let me bounce that off of you. How well, do you part of that, you know? that lost feeling is feeling like you were kind of alluding to before, isolated. That during the COVID, a lot of us are isolated from our usual social scenes. And uh, paradoxically, at least again in my tradition and perhaps in others, uh, one way to connect <clears throat> with <clears throat> the spirit or the force of the universe is through people, is, is making relationships with people, even through Zoom or other ways, that helps greatly. Uh, but the sense of being lost does also get diminished when we come back to developing our own relationship with our spiritual source, okay? Uh, the 12 step groups have a wonderful name, the higher power or power that's <clears throat> not necessarily uh, above, but it, it, when we connect with it, we feel higher. So from a more standard religious perspective, it would be God. And I, I want to see how uh, God is helping me. How can I do that? I need to develop my relationship. And many traditions is through meditation or prayer or studying spiritually inspiring texts. These are ways that people will connect. It's all about, in a way, connection. Of, that develops the relationship even more strongly, so you're, you're less alone, even if you're not connecting with so many people. I've been doing a study, little study group with, with a couple of folks, and that it really makes my week, because I'm preparing, I'm connecting, I'm thinking. I also have my own particular spiritual practices like prayer and meditation. That helps me connect. I feel less lost when that occurs. Okay. You know, when we're talking about this, it's not only, you know, when you're talking, it bounced off my mind that it's not only people mm -hmm. that we're not connecting with, it's the moment that we're not connecting with. When we expect something different and we find that we're sort of lost. Mm -hmm. We're looking around, but we're not seeing that moment. We're not living that moment. Mm -hmm. And to live that moment also gives us that connection uh, where we can connect up with our own spirituality. Mm -hmm. You find that in your groups as well, I assume. Well, definitely. This, um, uh, at least from a Jewish tradition, there are a couple of concepts. One is yesh and the other is ayin. These are Hebrew words. Yesh means there is. Ayin means there is not, uh, or really ain. But, uh, on a, a spiritual level, yesh means we're seeing things from a dualistic perspective. I have expectations. I am separate from my life experience, and I'm not getting what I want, and that's very frustrating. Versus a, a, a more spiritual or even mystical uh, approach is ayin, is there are no separation. We're all connected, okay? Uh, so in every moment, as I, I connect to the the unification or whatever moment, I'm going to find out what I need to do in that moment. And so that helps me let go of some of the frustrations I have and say, okay, here I am feeling isolated. What can I do to connect with life right now? And, and taking that, whether it's from a, a formal spiritual perspective or practice, or just as a person going out into nature, for example, is a very spiritual practice for many people. You feel connected to the world around you and can let go at least temporarily some of the, I'm over here and you're over there, we're all separate. We need that to function in the world, but sometimes we go a little too extreme and it leads to a lot of, of uh, uncomfortable feelings and, and disappointment. Absolutely, yeah. The, I connect up every uh, evening on my lanai. Uh, and I had the pleasure of Daniel and his wife, Margie, being up uh, on that lanai this mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. But every night at five, between five and six, I go on the lanai and I connect with 
the animals, the birds, uh, the sky, the trees, my yard, the garden. Mm -hmm. And I do that for an hour and it gives me such a, such a relief. And from that, I mean, living in a place like Hawaii is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonder how beautiful this island is. And once I connect with that moment, I can also see the people that I cannot see immediately. Like I can, I can envision my daughter who's in Kailua, mm -hmm. an hour away from me in the drive, just by sitting on my own lanai. And I can connect with her, I can connect with you. I can connect with other friends. Uh, if I only just take a breath and be in that moment and then it comes to me, rather than sitting there and listening to the news and going, oh no, oh no, oh my God, you know, what are you saying? You know, we're in big trouble, you know, I'm lost, that type of thing. Yeah, and, and when you make that connection, I know we're talking more spirituality here, but psychologically, physically, these kinds of practices are very good for us. They create more peace, uh, more a positive sense of well-being. You feel more grounded and less lost. Uh, even if you have losses uh, in your life, uh, people have, have passed on, it helps us cope with it better. It helps us move forward better. Um, and so, yeah, that's great that you do that. Can, can we follow that up? Because that was the next thing I was wanted to talk about was that feeling of loss, uh, loss and grief uh, that so many people have gone through. Those million people that have died in this country those million people have touched so many other lives and those other lives that are still here yeah. are missing them and feel that very strongly. It's like, like part of you has been cut out. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we deal with that kind of grieving through spirituality, Daniel? Well, I won't pretend I have all the answers, but something I learned a long time ago, I used to work at a synagogue. I was a Hebrew teacher and I heard this terrible story about one of our kids got run over by a car. And the rabbi was sitting with the parents. And can you imagine? It's like the most painful thing. The parents wanted to know where was God in all this? You know, they, they're trying to figure this out. And again, coming from more of a mainstream religious perspective. And he said, you know, in Hebrew, there are two names for God, or two, two basic names for God is Elohim and Yah. And they have qualities because they're not just a being, it's how we experience. Again, back to a relationship. So Elohim, we experience as, bam, things happen, you know, boom, this thing start happening, you know, many of them wonderfully surprising and many of them not wonderfully surprising, like losing somebody, losing someone to COVID. And we say, you know, wh where's God? What's going on? I'm so uncomfortable. I'm so sad. Um, but then this rabbi said, but then there's, yeah, there is the God of compassion. That aspect of God helps us to deal with the other aspect. You can replace the word God with life. Doesn't matter. What matters is that there are things we can do, we can connect with. Connecting with our spiritual source can help us go through our grieving and maybe even find meaning within that. That as we take that moment or two, even just to whether you wanted to say, I need some help, just be with me, just feel the presence, or like you, going out, being in the presence of the world, not trying to find an answer, just being present there. That is what, one way I'm familiar to deal with those things that come down so hard and we don't know the answers, we don't know why we feel angry. Uh, doing that is key, is spiritual connection, even if you're Mad at God, that's part of a relationship, or mad at, at the universe, however you want to conceive of it. This is a way, is to be present with it and connect with in any way you can. That helps us cope. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. But the difficulty is that with some people, you know, these are easy words to say, you know, and, I, and we're, we're sitting here and we're telling people, take a moment. Live in, the, live in that moment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see that moment, identify with it. And those words sound good. And I tell that to people and they try it and it works for a couple seconds and then boom, you know, all of a sudden the world 
crashes in again. And their mind up here, <laughs> just going, going, going on all the negatives. Uh -huh. And those few seconds of spirituality, of refreshment, of joy, just goes. Yeah. And to keep them in that, it's hard to, it's easy to say, but really hard for people to do. And I keep oh, trying to tell them, keep working at it. But it's difficult. I don't know. It, it, what are some things that have been successful for you in these areas? Well, keep them at well, it. One thing is, uh, it depends on what stage the person in it is. <clears throat> if they just lost someone, I'm not going to give them advice. I'll just be present with them. Yeah. If anything I can do, if they want to just talk, I'll listen or whatever. Uh, but at, at another stage, they may be ready to try some of these things or hear. You know, Reb Nachman, a great Hasidic rabbi, uh, said that uh, suffering tends to fade away when we are really connected with our purpose in life. When I'm doing those kinds of practices, and you're right, it is a practice to be in, in the world, to uh, be in the world, yet connect with a, a spiritual connection of some kind, okay? Like I said, whether it's God or however you want to conceive of it, or just being with life, that as you, it, it takes work because we are trained in a dualistic world to think we're separate and it's hard to come together. But when we do things that connect with our purpose in life to become connected, then those things that we thought were suffering cease to be the same. It becomes less painful. It becomes even on some level at some point strengthening. There's something uh, you're familiar with post-traumatic stress disorder. There's, there's a whole uh, field of, of therapy for it or perspective called post-traumatic growth, that going through these difficult situations actually can help us grow. And some of the ways that can help us to reach that is exactly what we're talking here, to have some quiet moments, to do our best to notice those thoughts of sadness or whatever comes through us and honor them, not necessarily push them away, but honor them and then refocus ourselves back Let's say we're just doing some meditation. We're, we're hanging out, uh, taking a walk in the woods or whatever, and just walk in the woods. And yes, take those with you because they are eventually going to let you know something really important in your life. Or maybe, again, from Reb Nachman about one's purpose. And then they'll eventually transform into something else that won't be quite as painful. Yeah, I totally agree. That's well put. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I've tried in the past, um, because it is so difficult to, to keep practicing, to keep trying that, uh, and every time the world intrudes and stops us and blocks us, it's a, people take it as a defeat. Right. Um, and oftentimes I'll try to give them something to do that's beyond just thinking, something mm -hmm. not just cognitive. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll just say, turn your head and look at it from a different side. Mm -hmm. And every time you feel like the world's crashing in mm -hmm. and you're going to be defeated, it's going to overrun you, look to the side. Or my favorite is to look up. <laughs> look up and see the heavens. and get strength to say, I can try this. I can keep at this. I will keep doing this mm -hmm. and I will find a clear spot in this dark sky. But the physical part seemed to help people a lot as well as just simply yeah. the cognitive part. Yeah, I know it's a, it sounds sort of silly, but hugging a tree or <laughs> laying, laying on the beach and feel the ground beneath you or sit yeah. somewhere and feel the ground beneath you. One thing I want to say from what you said is, the intent is not, oh, I'm going to do this, and is it working? You know, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not trying to get rid of these feelings or thoughts. They're there. It's part of the whole process. So, you know, uh, whether you're praying or meditating or just being present in an experience like taking a walk in the park, it's just be there, but also accept, yeah, I'm going to have these thoughts, and that's part of it. Not to try to get rid of it. Let it be there. And refocus your attention as best you can. 
it's you know you'll get the interference thought oh but that's not happening and that's just another distraction okay here you sit over here and we're going to do this so it's all part of it all the feeling of lostness just let it be there but bring yourself into some kind of experience where you're focusing on something like the breath or like the world around you you know a good world around you if you're in a, a place that feels too negative get out find a more positive place i keep coming back to the woods you know or the beach or natural environments naturally can help us to to feel that sense of oneness being in the ocean you yeah. know those kinds of things or being with with people you love and just hanging with them when i first moved to the north shore uh and that was 1977. How many years ago is that? I don't even want to count them up. But one of the things one of my friends did here on the North Shore was we went to Waimea Valley. He took me to Waimea Valley for the first time. And uh, we hiked back to the falls. And one of the first things he had us do, and we, and we were there, was, there was about five or six of us. He had us stop along the way and hug a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so every every time somebody says to me, hug a tree, I'm back in Waimea Valley. <laughs> Hugging a tree on my way to the glorious waterfall and the swimming that can be done there. And it's, it's actually that is another thing that if for some reason you can't leave your house, close your eyes and go somewhere in your imagination. That is or in your memory. Right. That's a very spiritual practice, too, because if you had like like what I, I was there with you, I was hugging a tree with you on the on the on the road to Waimea. It's just you can go back to an experience you've had and replay it and re-experience it inside. And that is just as strong a way to connect as going out somewhere. Absolutely. And and we're getting to sort of the my favorite part of this whole uh, talk, and that is the thing I love best about spirituality, and that is the hope that it engenders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about this before, so can we take a moment and can you tell us a little bit, give us a little perspective on the hope that spirituality can give us? Yes, well, again, it depends on which tradition, but often just having a belief, like I have one client, uh, he's going through some really hard stuff, and he said, but you know, I know God's gonna take care of me. He has a certain level of faith and that increases his sense of hope even though he's going through hard times it's going to be okay in the end so on that level the sense of belief in in uh that you are going to align with your spiritual source um another is these practices i keep talking about okay they actually if we can calm down enough on the inside and feel a connection with the world that often starts to increase a sense of confidence, of hope, uh, as we let those negative thoughts or feelings be there, but not overly focus on them. That can make room for that other part of us on the inside to come up, bubble up. And that, that one way to, to describe that is hope. Yeah, it's an amazing thing because it it brings out the best in us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We need to see the best in of us during these dark times. <clears throat> we see where we've <clears throat> have failed, where we've fallen short, when we can't be there to comfort loved ones when they're sick, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, when we can't do the things to help people that we used to do. Right. That erodes our confidence. But if we in touch with the spirituality and not only the spirituality of our higher power, and those around us, but our own insides, mm -hmm. our own essence, mm -hmm. that's part of the spirituality too. And that just makes you feel not only so much better, but it makes you have hope that you can make some good choices, that you can mm -hmm. choose mm -hmm. what's gonna happen, uh, not just sit back and be rolled over mm -hmm. by this coronavirus steamroller, or climate change or whatever it is that's rolling over us mm -hmm. that we can make some changes and that we have some power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to take that attitude which helps greatly instead of oh i know it's going to be terrible is to replace that with curiosity let's see what's going to happen yeah what's yeah, going to happen absolutely. next i'm ready for it mm -hmm. 
Daniel, we're, we've got less than five minutes to go. So my sort of traditional final question is, uh, maybe you could share a little bit of something about how uh, personally that you've found joy during these last two dark years. Because what people don't understand is helping professions, whether you're helping in a religious way or a psychological way or whatever way that you're helping other people, it's hard on you is, is on the people you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. And so um, any thoughts on what's brought you some particular joy in these well, last few uh, times of dark times? Well, for a work perspective, I feel incredible most of the time joy working with my clients. I feel very inspired by the lives they're going through, the struggles. We work together to explore how things can get better. They inspire the heck out of me. But in addition to what I do in my work, uh, I what brings joy to me is, is studying religious and spiritual texts, is learning and reading, is spending time with my wonderful wife, is going out into the world, going to beautiful places and being there. Um, as you know, when I'm not working, <laughs> so those are some of the things that bring joy uh, to me. Um, and, and just being aware that I am in uh, the world of the Holy One, which is is a fascinating. Who knows what's going to happen next? Uh, exploration and adventure. Adventure in a beautiful place called Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sometimes, you know, Daniel, I think I've died and gone to heaven, and heaven is actually where I live now, you know? Yes, yes. And so uh, that certainly makes me feel good and mm -hmm. takes away some of those dark skies, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I hope that everybody <clears throat> listening to us can sort of live in that Hawaiian moment and uh, be one with our Hawaiian environment. And by the way, for those of you listening in, if you have any questions, either of Daniel or myself or any other guests or people who've been on this show that you want to ask or some comments that you have, please uh, let Think Tech Hawaii know that they've been running, I'm sure, uh, where you can send the questions out. I see the thing below me right now. So uh, be sure and let us know. We'd like to hear from you and uh, respond to what you're thinking about and how you're feeling because uh, that's important to us. Daniel, thank you again so much for being here. It was and, a privilege. Uh, and thanks to Think Tech Hawaii and Jay and Haley and Michael and everybody who works here for helping us out. And thank you all for those of you out there listening. And I wish you the best of days and the happiest of days and the most spiritual of days. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.